Well, hey there, and welcome back to everyone. What an incredible week in markets we've had. Coming from back in the end of March, where you started hearing Rob and I talk about, hey, there's resistance in this area, and both of us coming back to you and going, punching through that resistance that I'm pointing to right now, around that $414 marker on the SPY, well, that takes us above the halfway marker of this entire retracement from Jan 2022 highs to the lows that we saw back in October of 2022. And you heard us beating the same drum with the technical indications, keeping the market pent up and pressured up against resistance, wherein the view we had was, let's see... If that breakout can happen, let's identify using technical tools if it's probable. The answer was yes at that time, it's probable. We did see the breakout, we had a back test, and the rest has been AI history. Now this week in markets, we reached for higher highs and the queues led the way. The SPY today did come and backtrack slightly and the question mark that many will have over this long market weekend where markets are closed on Monday is whether or not this pullback today has created enough of a negative to actually pull the market down from here and is that it well the interesting part about momentum uptrends and short squeezes is having targets and tools that are powerful that can help you identify where the high of highs is likely to present during a given hour, given day, given week or month, and then identifying using the same patterns on those tools, what's the next likely outcome. So I'm going to help with that and help break it down for you here. And at the same time, I want you to pay close, close attention to some of the things that I'm going to be breaking out on the next two charts, as I will be breaking them out further and teaching you a lot more about them in a very special session I'll be doing next Wednesday. If you take a look at the daily chart, now we're looking at the ES, same underlying S&P 500 index, but this is not the SPY ETF anymore. This is the S&P E-minis, the U contract. Now, if you go back to right over there, the end of May. You can see a variety of dots underneath the candle that was presenting. One of the key indications that presented back there was that cyan dot, which is a TRP buy signal. Now it came with the knowledge that using the wealth chart member exclusive indicators like the divergence tracker, like negative momentum shifts, that we still had a challenge area to break through. But what we saw happen was price action bounce up on that signal. The champion cross buy zone expanded. Price action took out the negative divergences and the negative momentum shifts. We came back to test the champion cross buy zone and lifted off right there. Now, as we lifted off, we got a range breaker signal, part of the member exclusive indications for all of you lucky wealth charters out there it was then followed up by a breakout forecaster and the rest has been history the important thing to note though is once that dot fired off the cyan dot that i'm speaking of you got a target one at 4356 for the s p e meetings a midline target and a target two Now, as we look at what happened with price, we pretty much virtually hit that target to in market today. The high on the day was 44.93 and about three quarters of a point and an indecision candlestick presented. We're still seeing incredible bullish momentum. Another part of the TRP indicator that I want to point out to you here is the crossover lines and it's contained within a channel you'll note that we got a blue dot coming from just above the center of the channel and the crossover lines were positive they ended up pausing as we saw the lines trying to breach into the uppermost quadrant and then the blue line spread from the black and we have seen it rise to the top that indicates that the positive momentum is strong but it's running a little out of a runway or let's just better say it fuel because we left the runway a long time ago now how can we use the fact that we hit a target too 
one of the only times we have in this incredible rally up um, amongst targets. Most often, we've come up close to the midline target, but not all the way up to the target too. What typically happens after that? Well, typically, we get a pause in price action and a refueling pullback. It would be absolutely normal to look for the market to pull back to the last breakout forecaster line, where we also have the speed lines that you can see from Rob's strategies, the blue speed lines, the fast speed line. And in order for, for, for this to be something that I can have a higher probability on, well, I want to break that daily chart into a four-hour chart. And the four-hour chart tells the story the best. It, too, virtually hit its target, too, in today's trade from a TRP buy signal that fired off on the 6 a.m. four-hour bar yesterday, June the 15th. That target, too, was 45.05. And, of course, you've seen what the highs were so far for the day. We got a negative momentum shift. Price action came down to close below the speed lines. But we are falling into a champion cross buy zone. We know that the TRP crossover line does have a red dot at the top of the channel, which implies that we need to refuel before we can pick this incredible momentum back up, which opens the door for the S&P E-minis to make a move from roughly 44.60 down to first area, probably the 44.20s. Now that's about 40 points. That's roughly $4 on the SPY. The likely outcome coming down into that area, perforating the bottom of the champion cross buy zone, would be for a bullish reversal back up again. Alternatively, the second area where a pullback can still likely resolve to a bounce would be down in between the bottom of the visual trend channel and, of course, that blue 50 period moving average that you see sitting closer to 4384 to 4400. Now, a pullback of that size would still be par for the course in this type of a market. And by the way, there is plenty of support in that territory for prices to come back down to and actually bounce back up from on the daily chart and other time frames. So when I look at the breakdown of technical signals, using the TRP indicator, I can tell you right now that we don't have a TRP sell on the four hour chart or the daily chart, but we've made it to targets and we are in need of refueling. If I take the time frame down to a one hour, you'll see that three one hour bars ago in today's market, we did get a TRP sell with an open target one at 44.40 and an open target two at 44.20. So if we take the one hour chart, which typically projects out three to six hours, and extend that out for what kind of behavior we may see over the long weekend, the risk is eventually over the course of one full trading day after this long weekend that we see some downside action. That downside action opens up in earnest on a break below the bottom of the visual trend channel. So where we are in market as futures tick away into the close, we're sitting at 44.59 right now. A move that can take us down towards that 44.20-ish area uh, would be normal, par for the course. And effectively, that is like coming back down to the first breakout forecaster area. There in about four to five dollars down on the SPY would be the rough estimate of that. And then a bounce back up. Keep in mind... This market is bullish. It's not about pullback and breakdown at this stage. It's a lot more about dip and then bounce back up. Now, if I take you back to where we started this journey right over here, that would imply 4 to $5 down from about $439 and change on the SPY. Back down towards 435 ish And then back up would be the insight. Can it continue from there? Well, let's see how the signals shape up. And I'm going to be teaching you all about them in a very special session next Wednesday, June the 21st. I want to get you in first and foremost right into registration for that session. Simply go to becomeabettertrader.com forward slash go forward slash go and you'll be able to join us in that session on Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, 7 a.m. Pacific Time. It's not going to be a recorded session. And if you like the way that I broke down looking forward in the market today, well, there's a whole bunch more 
in terms of how to use the indications, how to use scanning with the TRP toolkit, and much, much more with how to use it in conjunction with the Wealth Chart member exclusive indicators for both day and swing traders. Have an amazing market long weekend, folks. We'll see you back here for the next video. First thing next week, have a wonderful, safe three day market weekend. And I'm looking forward to seeing you on the flip side. Rob shouts out, hi, he's been at several very important meetings all about trying to bring much, much more incredible value to wealth charts and all the incredible tools he's developed for us and much, much more. He'll be on videos just like these next week with us as well. Looking forward to seeing you then and looking forward to seeing you next Wednesday in particular on the 21st of June at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Make sure you go get that seat. You can't afford to miss this type of a session in markets like these. Have a great long weekend.